In this video, I will be asking a series of questions about the female reproductive system to help students determine what they actually know versus what they still need to work on. So first, I would like you to tell me what is this organ, this, and that. So this was the bladder, which is sitting underneath of the uterus, and this is the rectum. I want to know what is this tube, what is this tube, this, this, and that. So this tube is the urethra, this is the vagina, this is the labia minora, labia majora, and what do we call the labia minora and labia majora together? We call them the vulva. So Colloquially, in common terms, people will refer to the external genitalia as the vagina, but actually this is the vulva, the canal is the vagina. And then this in the front is the glands of the clitoris. So now I want you to think um, there are three layers of the uterus. What are they? So their outer layer is the perimetrium, the middle layer is the myometrium, and the innermost layer is the endometrium. So the endometrium has two sublayers to it. What are they and what is the purpose of them? So the deeper sublayer is the stratum basal. The innermost sublayer near the uterine cavity is the stratum functionalis. So the stratum functionalis sheds every month during menstruation, but the stratum basal remains and off of the stratum basal grows the new stratum functionalis. The uterus also has three regions. There's this region, this one, and this area. So this is the fundus, the body, and the cervix. So the cervix extends down into the vagina and around the cervix there's a little bit of space. What do we call the space? So the space is the fornix. And the functional purpose of that space is actually to give semen a place to pool um, so after ejaculation, semen goes from being liquid to being kind of like a jelly and basically it is supposed to cling on to this area in order to let the sperm get up into the uterine cavity. And also the cervix produces mucus, why? Presumably to keep infection or any pathogens entering the vagina out of the uterine cavity. The only time the cervical mucus thins is around mid-month when a woman is ovulating. It's basically like letting down the barrier to give the opportunity for the sperm to get in. So what do we call the innermost layer of the vagina? The mucosa. And what type of epithelium is it made of? 
So the vagina has stratified squamous epithelium because you find stratified squamous epithelium anywhere where you need to be protected from friction. This semester, a student asked me a very good question, which is why is it ridged like that? So these ridges allow the vagina to expand in size during intercourse. All right, so we have various muscles. There's this muscle, this muscle, a wall of muscle here, and in that wall of muscle, there's a little circular muscle here. So this is the external anal sphincter, and it's a circle, so it's gonna circle around. This is also the external anal sphincter, which would make this the internal anal sphincter. What type of muscle? Skeletal, smooth. This wall of muscle here is the urogenital diaphragm and this circular muscle here is the external urethral sphincter. So the internal urethral sphincter is up here even though it's not really visible on the model. It's surrounding the internal urethral orifice. The external urethral sphincter is right by the exit. Now we're looking at a more superior view. So to help orient you, this is the bladder, uterus, rectum. So this region of the uterus is the fundus. This is the body. What is this, this, and this? So this is the fallopian tube, also sometimes called the oviduct or uterine tube. This is the ovary itself and this is the ovarian ligament. The fallopian tube has four regions. What are they? So there's the region right next to the uterus. That is the isthmus. Then next to that, from there till about when it starts to curve is the ampulla. From the ampulla to almost the end is the infundibulum. And then it's not shown very well on this model, but there are little fingers that extend from the infundibulum. What are those? So those are the fimbrae, and fun fact, the ovary is actually not connected to the fallopian tube. So when the egg is ovulated, those fimbrae have ciliated cells that are beating and sweeping and trying to drag the egg into the fallopian tube where it belongs. The uterus has multiple ligaments that support it. We can see three here. There's this one, this one, and that. So in the front, you find the round ligament. The wide one is the broad ligament. And then in the back is the sacro uterine ligament because it is going from the sacrum to the uterus. What is this and that? So this is the ureter because that is the bladder. What 
what is this, this, this. and that. So the fat pad in the front is the mons pubis. This is the greater vestibular gland, also sometimes called the Bartholin's gland. And once again, this is the labia majora and labia minora. So this semester, I actually had a student ask me a very good question, which was, Where's the third hole? So, what you're actually seeing here, this is not the vagina yet. This is the vestibule, which is the entryway that contains both the opening of the urethra and the vagina. So, the third hole is hiding in the vestibule. And also, that is why this is called the greater vestibular gland, because it provides a lubricating fluid for the vestibule. So those are all of the things I can think of to talk about today. I hope it was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.